the brand inside okay so over the last couple of weeks we've done a couple of brand things we've done brand which is your message out into the world your um purpose mission vision how it's expressed last week we did it about visually and how to actually work really well with uh, brand designers as opposed to graphic designers so that's been very interesting and the thing that i want to talk about today is the brand inside now this is really important because this becomes you see each of these stages become tipping points or levers for growth i'm always really interested in what the lever for growth is at any point so brand for me is a really strong anchor point because it's very much associated with identity and um, when we do brand well it pushes us it helps us reach a little higher on our tippy toes to move to the next stage so this particular session which is our ask Vanilla how five <laughs> which is the brand inside helps us you know the last couple of sessions we do the thing of the reach and the brand inside helps us kind of build that plateau that level in of bedding that reach so we reach and we bed in and then we reach again and unless you bed that reach in and become accustomed to it so that it feels like this suit of clothes that sits really well you can't stretch again you'll end up in a cycle okay so the brand inside okay and my question for you all was does what you do on the inside match what you do on the outside okay and how i've put it for you is if it doesn't that truth leaks and we don't want the leakage. We want to make sure that everything we do on the outside matches what we do on the inside. Because when it matches what we do on the inside, we are actually building that plateau, building that groundwork in, that foundation in to reach again, okay? So the inside, so what I wanted to do is help you create that internal brand. And I like to think of this as kind of internally in you as the entrepreneur, but also internally in your organization. And yes, you do have an organization, even when it's only just you, but your organization is your self organization first, and it has to start there. And what and why I'm pointing here to myself all the time, it's because that internal organization is about the values that you have for your business, okay? So what are, when we think about purpose, mission, vision, and that's great and that's reaching and that's stretching and pushing we have to ground it with what are the values we will live by and do business by how are we going to do business what do we stand for and when we have that in place that is the action that will make that will help you build that foundation for growth and i do this as a very simple but quite deep exercise to get you to really uncover these values that you are going to do business by and live by at each stage of the growth in your business, okay? So, my question for you is this. When you're thinking about the brand inside, what do you stand for? What are the values that will take you the rest of the way that match your purpose and that, because I always believe that your purpose is always uh, something that's about to help another person, to help the world in a better way. So it always is a very lofty goal. It's a very wanting to help the world goal. So in order to be have this positive impact on the world and on your community, you also must have this positive impact inside the business. So when we look at values, we think about the things of how we will do business. So are you going to... Um, Use authenticity as a core value in your business. Are you going to use truth? Are you going to use action? Are you going to use passion? Are you going to use what is the language? What are the key words that anchor your business and your values? Okay, let's make this a little bit more solid. There are many, many words that you can use. There is so many of them, but it's the ones that are the primary values of how you will do business that we want to focus on. And in some businesses I've worked with before, their value was about getting things done, about making things happen. So that it was always about pushing forward and pushing and making it happen, taking action. Other people I've worked with, authenticity was really an anchor. 
Um, and I want you to think of no more than five, three to five values that you that are going to anchor your growth. And these are the most important values to you. Now, not just words. And what I'm going to do is I have a very simple exercise that allows you to one, uncover those values because like with pages and pages and you have to go with gut, what comes deepest, hardest, fastest, truer, truest for you because you can make that real. And I want you to pick those three to five values. And then the second thing I want you to do is explain them. Explain how you make them true, that it's not just lip service. Because in order to create these foundations, we have to make them true. So how do you make that value real in your business? What is it that you will test yourself against when a customer has a problem? What is it you will test yourself against when someone gives you a shortcut? What is it that will test you against when your back is to the wall and it's not easy to do the right thing? What will make you always do the right thing and the right things are expressed in your values? Because it's always the right thing to do the right thing for you, for your customers, for the growth of your business, for the growth of the people you work with, okay? So pick the four or five values that will make a difference and anchor your growth in your business. And the second thing I will ask you to do is explain them, make them real. And one last thing, out of the five, which will you use as an anchor word for your year ahead? Now, I find that this is a very powerful exercise to do because in every year of our business, we stretch a little bit differently. And when we stretch a little bit differently, it's really nice to anchor that against, I'm going to need, I'm going to follow my joy this year. I'm going to be courageous this year. I'm going to accept my own power this year. What is the anchor phrase or term that you will use to anchor the growth in this year ahead. And I advocate that we move this every year to push you forward so that when you crack it, when you use that to push you to the next stage, then you have moved to another stage and you need a new word. So I advocate that every year. So we have, get the values right, explain them, make them real for the business so that when you are tested, as we all are, that you will know what the right thing to do is. Thirdly, that you have an anchor word for that year ahead. So this will be the question I leave you with. What are your values? How will you make them real in your business? And I'll put a link below in the comments after I do the replay of where you can find out how to do this exercise. The other thing that I want to say to you is, this is not lofty stuff. This is not nice, touchy-feely stuff. This has a basis in real, research around growth there's a great article i'm also going to link to this article uh, done by two researchers for the harvard business review and they look at these three things okay and it's just three essential interdependent elements that create a strong brand and we've actually covered them over the last three weeks okay the first one is your vision okay and we've talked about that incessantly as you know i love it so it's your aspiration for the business that's one element the second element is culture, which is your business's values, your behaviors, your attitudes of how you work with first as an entrepreneur when you outsource, first as yourself, then as you start to outsource, and then lastly, as you actually build your team around you. You need those values. So that's the second interdependent element. And the last one is image, which we spoke about last week. These three elements are critical for successful brand vision, image, culture. They are interdependent. They test each other. When there's a gap in one of them, brand doesn't work. We know this from the research. So this is what you look for. You look for these gap. You look for the gap between vision and culture, which is what your aspiration is, your purpose is, and does that match the culture that you've created to make it true? We look for that gap. The second gap that we look for to make sure our brand is strong is the image and the culture gap, which is 
how you look on the outside and how you treat the people you work with on the inside. And the people you work with can be someone you outsource, it can be employees, team members, how you treat your shareholders, etc. And the last gap that you look for is the image and the vision gap. So if the visual brand doesn't match the vision brand, then that's a gap to look for. So when we have these three inter interdependent elements in place, and we can test all the time, and I do advocate that you test that this, in this works every six months in the business. When you have this in place, your business will grow. And that's all I have for you today in our fifth session of the Ask Finola How series. I hope you enjoyed and watch for the replay because I'm going to put a link in it that will help you use these techniques and download brand values, etc. so that you can actively use them in the growth of your business. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.